Hello, welcome to this video in a series about mass collaborations. This is the third video in the series and it's about open call projects. This material is covered in chapter five of Bit by Bit. So as you remember in the first video in this series, I talked about organizing mass collaborations into three categories. In this video, we'll talk about open call projects. These are ones where the researcher herself might not even know how to solve the problem, but by creating a question in a certain way where it's possible to check the answers, researcher sends it out to everyone and finds potentially really exciting new solutions. So in this video, I'm going to give you two, a couple examples of open call projects, but before I do that, I'm going to describe open calls in a kind of more general way. Um, then you'll notice these patterns as I'm going through the examples. So open calls are problems where solutions are easier to check than to generate. So this might be a really hard question that you might have, but if someone gives you the answer, it's very clear that that's the, the right answer. But even if you don't know how to generate the answer yourself. Um, so if it's really easy to check the answer, then this enables easy and fair evaluation, which is really important and exciting because um, if it's a lot of social research right now is often very hard to evaluate. Um, it, it's very time consuming. It takes experts to evaluate. And also that evaluation is sometimes hard to disconnect from the person who conducted the research. So we often have things like blind review, but it's still very hard to, to separate out those things. So in an open call though, because the solutions are easy to check, um, this can enable fair evaluation. Um, in an open call, you often take the best submission, not a combination of submissions. So if you remember in the earlier video about human computation, we would often take the labels of many people and combine them together to get an average. Here we take, don't do an averaging, we take the best. Um, and this requires participants to have specialized skills because they're going to often solve a problem that the researcher herself might not even know how to solve. So let me give you now some examples. Um, so one example is a project called the Netflix Prize that was run by Netflix. Um, and it was trying to develop a better algorithm to recommend movies to their viewers. So Netflix in-house researchers had been working on this problem for a while, but their pro progress had stalled. And so they said, let's open this up to outsiders and see if some other people can come up with a better way of doing this. So what they did is they released a training set of about 100 million movie ratings. And you can think of those, and, and then they held back 1.5 million movie ratings as a test set. So you can think about this data as a big matrix. It had about 500,000 500, users and about 20,000 movies. And so a lot of the entries in that matrix are blank. Some of those uh, show the number of stars. So for example, this might say user one, movie one gave it two stars. This might be someone who, movie one might be Star Wars and the user didn't like Star Wars that much. So the challenge is given the pattern of these movie ratings, how do you uh, predict the held out data, the data here represented in blue question marks. So here the goal is very clear, predict what's in the test set. But how you do it is not very clear. The Netflix researchers had worked on it for many years they thought there might be a better way to do it, but they weren't sure how. So they opened it up and they offered a prize of a million dollars to anyone who could um, beat their solution by 10%. So they received 44,000 valid submissions from more than 5,000 teams. And so here it's very important that these submissions were easy to check. So imagine if Netflix said, send us an email with, with your ideas for how to improve this or send us scientific papers that would help us improve this. It would be very difficult to read 44,000 submissions. So what they did is they compared the, they had an easy system. They took the ratings, the predicted ratings that people submitted, they compared it to the actual ratings, they calculated the uh, root mean squared error. So it's very simple, easy to evaluate. Just compare your predictions to the ground truth in the held out uh, test set. So let me give you an example of what something like this can enable. So this is a blog post uh, that came out during the Netflix prize. Um, and let me zoom in on part of it. This is a key part right here. 
Uh, so in other words, if we take the rank 40 singular value decomposition of the 8.5 billion matrix, we have the best parentheses least error approximation we can within the limits of our user movie rating model, i.e. the SVD, which found the best generalization for us. Pretty neat. So just the context here is this blog is describing um, what the author thinks is a very important idea in the Netflix prize and, and the blog post goes on. Only problem is we don't have 8.5 billion entries, we have 100 million entries and 8.4 billion empty cells. Oh, okay, there's another problem too, which is that computing the SVD of ginormous matrices is, well, no fun unless you're into that sort of thing. But just because there are 500 really complicated ways of computing singular value decompositions in the literature doesn't mean that there isn't a really simple way too. Just take the derivative of the approximation error and follow it. This has the added bonus that we can choose to simply ignore the unknown error in the 8.4 billion empty spots. So yeah, you mathy guys are rolling your eyes right now as it dawns on you just how short the path was. So this is someone who's proposing a new way of approaching this problem. Is this a good solution? Does anyone, do you know? Is this, is this a good idea? So imagine someone who worked at Netflix received an email like this. Would they read it? Maybe, maybe not. How would they even know if this was a good idea? And also, this doesn't come from a professor at MIT. This came from a software developer who, at the time that he wrote this, was backpacking around. Uh, so, is this a good idea or not? Uh, if you know about the Netflix Prize, you know that this is actually a very good idea. So this one idea instantly moved him into fourth place, and it was later used seriously by all competitors. So one of the beautiful things about an open call is it enables good ideas when they're out there to be recognized as good ideas because we can see that in fact they, ought, they do actually work well for this task. So that's an example about the Netflix prize. Now I want to tell you about a different open call that, that has some similarities to the Netflix prize but is also a little bit different. So this is from a project called Foldit. And so Foldit was about developing better ways to understand protein folding. So what is protein folding? Well, I'm not a biologist, so I'm gonna simplify a great deal. So proteins um, have certain shapes based on the things that make up those proteins. So that is an example on your screen of a protein and the final configuration that it folds into. And roughly, proteins fold into their lowest energy configuration. There's pushing and pulling happening inside of the protein and it settles down into its lowest energy configuration. And biologists are very interested in knowing what shape a protein will take because that can be useful for um, developing medicines and building proteins that might end up with certain shapes. So you might think, well, if, if it moves to its lowest energy configuration, why don't we just try out every possible configuration and pick the lowest energy configuration? And it turns out that kind of brute force approach is just not gonna work. There's just too many possible configurations. And so for the foreseeable future, brute force is not gonna be effective. But there's a large community of researchers that build algorithms that try to cleverly search through the space of possible configurations to find the lowest energy configuration. And so uh, one group of researchers, uh, but, but these algorithms still require tremendous computing power. So one group of researchers created a project where you could volunteer your computer to help their research in protein folding. So while your computer was not being used, a screensaver would take over and that screensaver was showing you protein folding calculations that your computer was doing. And so as some people watch these, uh, these screensavers, they started to think that they might be able to do better than the computer at finding the lowest energy configuration. And so out of that, this project Foldit was formed. And so they created a game like what you see here, where a player in the game sees this protein and then has the opportunity to reshape the protein to try to move it into its lowest energy configuration. So you can shake and wiggle and do other things to the protein and then you can see the score and you get more and more points as you move to a lower energy configuration. So it's kind of like a big puzzle. 
Um, and many people found this kind of puzzle, puzzling to be very enjoyable, even people who didn't have a lot of training in biochemistry. And so what they found is that gamers were able to outperform the best known computational algorithms on five out of 10 proteins of unknown structure. So what they showed is that people playing this game were able to accomplish something that was better than the state of the art algorithms. So the last open call I wanna tell you about is a project that I've worked on called the Fragile Families Challenge. And it's a project that I'll tell you about in the fifth video of this series. So wrapping up about open calls, these are problems where solutions are easier to check than to generate. So for the Netflix prize, if you make some movie ratings, it's easy for them to check the accuracy of those ratings, even if they didn't know how to generate them, those ratings themselves. For Foldit, if you say, I have an energy configuration, I have this protein folded into an energy configuration that's lower than the energy configuration that you have, that's something that's easy to check, even if it was very hard to generate that low energy configuration, to find that low energy configuration. This enables easy and fair evaluation. So we saw the blog post about the singular value decomposition um, that was able to be instantly recognized as an important contribution. Uh, it's also the case that some of the best folded players are people who have no formal training in biochemistry. They're people who enjoy doing puzzles online. Um, in, all in these cases, we take the best submission. So the, we, there was a winner of the Netflix prize um, and also in fold it, you know, they, they look for the lowest energy configuration. They don't take the average of all the solutions that were submitted by participants. Uh, and it requires specialized skill. Um, so to be able to create an algorithm to win the Netflix prize requires specialized skill. To be able to play fold it and find the low energy configuration requires specialized skill, although not necessarily formal scientific credentials in either of those cases. So if you want to learn more, I'd recommend this book, Longitude by Sobel. Uh, it's a great popular science book about the Longitude Prize, one of the first open calls that took place um, a long time ago in uh, England, um, specifically about helping them find out where boats were at sea. This was way before GPS. Um, also, um, there's this very nice paper about the statistical significance of the Netflix challenge that reviews a lot of the novel and interesting statistical ideas that were developed and used in the challenge. So that brings us to the end of this video about open calls. In the next video, I'll talk about distributed data collection. This is rather than having um, the mass collaboration involve people submitting novel solutions to a problem, you want to have them involved in generating new measurements of the world. Thank you.